Okay, so um, our bones are not just unprotected. Uh, they are actually surrounded by connective tissue layers that protect them. The outer layer is the cleverly named periosteum. Remember, osteo means bone. Peri means around. Periosteum goes around the bone, and it's around all bone. Uh, in the skull, this becomes part of the dura mater that protects the brain from the bone itself. So it kind of has a dual purpose, protecting the bone and protecting the brain. In the rest of the tissue, in the rest of the body, it's just going to protect the bone from trauma from the outside. It is a layer of dense, irregular connective tissue, and it's actually made up of two layers, a uh, fibrous outer layer and then a cellular inner layer. So this outer layer is dense, irregular connective tissue. This inner layer is cellular, um, and that produces these little perforating fibers, you can see here, that actually uh, perforate or make holes into the compact bone to attach themselves to the compact bone. So when we look at, um, that was not supposed to be there. Uh, that, so that's the periosteum around the outside of the bone. The inner surfaces of bone, all of these pockets in the spongy bone and this main cavity inside the long bone that we'll get to in a minute, that's called endosteum, endo meaning inner. And this is going to have the stem cells that create new bone tissue and new osteocytes. Um, it also contains cells that are going to um, dissolve old bone so that it can be replaced. And this layer is really, really active, um, really all the time, but especially as bone is healing. So first we have these osteoprogenitor cells. Okay, so osteo means bone, pro means before, and gen means create. So these are the cells that are going to create the cells that make new bone. Okay, so they're not the osteoblasts, which are osteogerm cells. They are the, the ones that make the osteoblasts. Okay, so they do mitosis. One, the original cell stays here and the new cell becomes an osteoblast. The osteoblast is going to lay down new bone tissue. It puts down a tissue called osteoid. And that osteoid is primarily collagen. And then that's going to be replaced by calcium. It's going to, calcium is going to diffuse out of the bloodstream into these tissues and harden that osteoid into bone. As that happens, some of the osteocytes get trapped in the osteoid, and, or the osteoblasts get trapped and become osteocytes, okay? So once they're trapped in the bone, then they become osteocytes. Before that, they're actually moving around. Hang on, I've got a video. Um, and they're called osteoblasts, and they're secreting that osteoid to make new bone. Osteoclasts are the ones that reabsorb the bone matrix, the, the calcium phosphate. These are actually gonna come from bone marrow. Okay, so they're made by the bone marrow, but then they sit in this endosteum layer. And they go along and they uh, secrete enzymes that dissolve the mineralized part of the bone. So they sit in these little pockets called resorption lacunies because they're reabsorbing or resorbing the bone tissue. Their job is really important because if you don't get enough calcium in your diet, your bones are going to give up calcium in order to make sure there's enough free calcium in your bloodstream so that your muscles and your nervous system can work. Because remember, in order for your nerves, your neurons to send an action potential to another cell, they have to have calcium to make exocytosis at the synaptic knob. So if you don't have enough calcium in your bloodstream, your nervous system doesn't work. Your mu skeletal muscles are going to work the same way to create an action potential inside the skeletal muscle. That doesn't work. If you don't have enough calcium, your muscles don't work either. So it's kind of important. 
So one of the main functions of your bone is actually just to store calcium so that you don't run out in your bloodstream. Oh, and <laughs> word to the wise for pregnant women, um, if you uh, don't get enough calcium while you're pregnant, your fetus will steal your bone because its skeleton is growing. Yeah, good. So um, the osteoclasts dissolve the bone, osteoblasts create new bone. All right, so let's watch a video of this. Let's try that. All right, please play. Uh, I, I don't think, can I just go, oh, this, make this go. Can you hear that? Yeah. Bone is a dynamic tissue that is continually being built, broken down, and rebuilt in a process called bone remodeling. Bone tissue is broken down and resorbed by multinucleated cells known as osteoclasts. These cells are derived from monocytes, which originate within bone marrow. Osteoclasts play an important role in liberating minerals and other molecules stored within the bone matrix. Bone tissue serves as a repository for vital minerals including calcium phosphate and various biologically active molecules, such as growth factors. The release of calcium from the bone can play a role in maintaining its homeostasis within the body. The cells responsible for building new bone tissue are known as osteoblasts. Osteoblasts are thought to be derived from cells found to be associated with blood vessels. Once active, they start to produce the organic component of bone, osteoid, which is predominantly made of collagen. Minerals start to crystallize around the collagen scaffold to form hydroxyapatite, the major inorganic constituent of bone, which contains calcium phosphate. Bone mineral density, or BMD, can be used to estimate the strength of bone and to assess the risk of fracture. As osteoblasts form new bone tissue, many become embedded within the matrix and differentiate into osteocytes. The structure, composition, and cellular processes that occur within bone allow it to simultaneously serve as a calcium reservoir, while providing structural support for the vital organs and for locomotion. Isn't that cool? I just love that video. That, no, stop. I'm going to go to here. Okay. So what I love about this, besides the fact that you can see the osteoblasts and osteoclasts moving around, which is so cool, but so here's an osteocyte that's gotten trapped in the osteoid and the, which has become bone. But you can see these little strands between the osteocytes. These are the cannulicule. Yeah. Oh, so detailed. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Endosteum includes the osteoblasts and osteoclasts and the osteoprogenitor cells that make the, um, the osteoblasts. Okay, so bone remodeling. They mentioned this in the video. And for those of you who are thinking like, um, don't I, uh, aren't I done like growing? Like, is, why am I still making bone? You're Skeleton is actually constantly being what we call remodeled, meaning that it is uh, changing throughout your life. So um, part of that is in order to maintain the level of calcium in your bloodstream. Part of that is if you ever have any breaks, healing those breaks, but also responding to stress. When you do weight bearing exercise, like running, dancing, weight training, um, playing kind of any kind of sport like soccer, basketball, things we're not doing right now. Um, your 
the little trabeculae inside your spongy bones actually get kind of little broken and they have to be rebuilt. And in response to stress, your bones actually get rebuilt a little bit stronger. And so um, that actually increases the density of your bones, helps ward off the inevitable action of the osteoclasts as you get older. Um, once you're done growing, like in your 20s, your osteoclasts tend to work a little harder than your osteoblasts, unless you give your osteoblasts a kick in the butt. So normally, as you get older, your bones become less dense. And then when you're really old, you can break your bones much more easily just because they're thinner. So by doing weight-bearing exercise, what you're doing is essentially telling your osteoblasts, get to work, this bone needs to be stronger. You're also going to, as you use your muscles, increase the size of the bumps on the bone that those muscles attach to. Okay. You're gonna really appreciate this when we start learning all those bumps because most of the bones we have suck because we got our old bones from old people who weren't exercising before they died. Anyway, I'm gonna show you a quick clip of a couple of guys whose bone density I'm sure is insane because what they do with their skeleton is absolutely nuts. I do not recommend this, but this is a really good explanation of bone model, remodeling. So, come on. If this blow hit you, it could shatter bones, trigger hemorrhaging, even damage vital organs. The body truly is a weapon. On the impact criteria, it scored a knockout. But how did he do it? Human long bones are like drinking straws, hollow in the middle and stronger on the long axis. Weaker when bent, they are softest, called spongy bone on the ends. That would have broken the, the normal person's hands. So we know that there's some type of bone remodeling going on. That's the secret. Hard body training actually transforms the bone itself. It's called Wolf's Law, based on the pioneering discoveries of 19th century surgeon Julius Wolf. These are the structures in human bone, trabeculi, Latin for little beams. When bones are traumatized over and over, they lay down more calcium structures, more little beams. The bones become denser, harder, more durable. Ancient martial artists knew the secret of Wolf's Law long before modern science. For centuries, they've trained by breaking boards, striking sand, iron, stone. That which does not kill you really does make you stronger. So I don't recommend you go around doing that, um, but how cool is that? Okay. Why are you not leaving? Thank you. There we go. Okay. So, um, isn't that neat? Anyway, so by doing weight bearing exercise, even if you're just going for a walk, you're helping your bones to constantly maintain the density that you have. And then whenever you stress your bones, um, you are building up more bone density. And it's your osteoblast and your osteoclast working. So here's a diagram from uh, Encyclopedia Botanica, of all things, showing the bone before remodeling, the osteoclast dissolving away that bone, osteoblasts building it up, and then what we end up with is the new bone is actually thicker than the old bone. So we have the old bone layer that's now thinner, but then we've added this new layer. Cool, right? All right, I'm gonna stop there and then we'll do the next section.